Hey friends, my name is Z and you're watching Z Miss Easy. And welcome to the last video for section 5 of IGCSE Business Studies. And in our next lesson, we move on to the last section, which is section 6. But here's section 5 for 5.5 analysis of accounts. And by the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe 5.5.1 profitability, 5.5.2 liquidity. 5.5.3 How to interpret the financial performance of a business by calculating and analyzing profitability ratios and liquidity ratios. And 5.5.4 Why and how accounts are used. So check out the pain comment for all the timestamps and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and ring the notification bell. And we'll move on to the first one which is 5.5.1. Uh, profitability and 5.5.3 interpret financial performance and the specification 5.5.3 is throughout the video so just take note of that and we'll talk about the analysis of published published account and the company account or financial statements we have studied contain a great deal of the information and these published accounts of limited companies are made available to all those interested in the performance of the business and there are many stakeholders who will analyze the company's accounts and we must now look at how these accounts can be used and analyzed to give the great information or like the information that these groups need. So here's just a question. What is meant by the analysis of accounts? And it means using the data contained in the accounts to make some useful observations about the performance of the financial strength and the financial strength of the business. And without the analysis of, analysis of accounts, it's often impossible to tell whether a business is Number one, performing better this year than last year. And number two, performing better than other businesses. So here's just like an example of a summary statement of income. Then we have analysis of published accounts as well. And you can see these three pictures. It's impossible to tell which of the businesses, like whether Tesco or Walmart, is more profitable without analyzing their accounts. And it is important to use more than one figure from, the, from like the account when trying to assess how a business is performing. And comparing two figures from the account in this way is called ratio analysis. And this is a very important way of analyzing the published account. And there are many ratios which can be calculated from a set of accounts. And this chapter right here concentrates on five of the most commonly used, which we'll look into it later. And these ratios are used to measure the, and compare the profitability or performance and liquidity or the ability of a business to pay back its short-term debt of a business. And we'll look into the concept and importance of profitability. Profit is an amount of money that the business has made after all costs have been taken off revenue. However, profitability is different to profit, although it is related. It is a measurement of the profit made relative to either number one, the value of sales achieved, and number two, the capital invested in the business. And profitability is measured in percentage form, and profitability is therefore a measure of efficiency and can be used to compare the business performance over a number of years and also to compare its performance with that other businesses. And it's important to number one, investors when deciding which business to invest in. And number two, the directors and managers of the business to assess if the business is, is like becoming more or less successful over time. And this might lead to the direction of the manage, or like directors or managers needing to change the operations of the business to improve profitability. Then we have some equations for the profitability ratios. And here are three most commonly used profitability ratios. Number one, it's return on capital employed. And that we have here an operating profit. The operating profit is also known as EBIT or the earnings before interest and taxes. So in percentage form of the return on capital employed, we have the operating profit divided by the capital employed times 100. So let's say here's some, an example. Let's say the operating profit is £280,000 and the capital employed is £1,400,000. So the Return on capital employed in the percentage form will be £280,000 divided by £1,400,000 equals 20% after times by 100. And number two, we have the gross profit margin, and it's in the percentage form as well. The gross profit margin will, equals to, uh, will equal to gross profit divided by the revenue 
times by 100 to get in the percentage form. So here's an example. Let's say the gross profit is $3 million divided by the revenue of $5 million times by, times by 100 to get a percentage form to get 60% of gross profit margin or in non-percentage form is 0 0.6. Then number three, we have the net profit margin, also known, also known as the profit margin. And the net profit margin formula in percentage is equal to net profit divided by the total revenue times by 100 to get a percentage form as well. So here's an example, a case study example. They say the net profit margin equals the net profit, $280, divided by the total revenue, 1,300, times by the 100 to get a percentage form to get 21.5%. Then we have what do they tell us for the profitability, profitability ratios. And one profitability ratio result is not very useful, but when the ratio result is compared with others, then some effective analysis can be done. And here are some examples taken from a business like ratio results, observations, and analysis. And I'll skim through this. So let's say the gross profit margin, like 2017 is 20% and 2018 is 24%. This means that the gross profit on each $1 of sale has increased. And this means that the business is becoming more successful at converting sales into profit. And number two, we have the net profit margin. Let's say the 2017 is 14%. But 2018, it decreases to 12%. This means that the net profit on each $1 of sales has fallen, even though like gross profit margin has increased. This means that the business is less successful at converting sales into net profit. And the overhead or fixed cost of the business must have increased significantly, um, significantly during the year, reducing the company's net profit compared to revenue. Then we have the return on capital employed. We have 2017 is 10 percent and 2018 is 6 percent. This means that the each the profit made for each one dollar invested in the business has fallen, and this must be because either net profit has fallen or capital employed has increased. And if capital employed has increased, this could mean that the manager of the business has invested more, hoping to be like helping to make higher profit in the future. Then we have 5.5.2 liquidity and as well as 5.5.3. And here's the concept and importance of liquidity. And this measures a very important features of a business. And liquidity is ability to of a business to pay back its short-term debt. And if a business cannot pay its suppliers for materials that are important to the production, or if the business cannot repay an overdraft when required to, it is said to be illiquid, meaning when assets are not easily convertible to cash and the businesses it owes money to may force it to stop trading or operate its business and sell its assets so that debts are repaid. Then here are two most commonly used liquidity ratio. Number one, we have the current ratio. The current ratio formula equals current assets divided by current liabilities. And as we seen last lesson, we know what current assets and current liabilities are. And current means that it's like short term because it's less than one year. So at current assets are assets that are held less than a year. And current liability are short term debts. And for long term, you would say non-current liability or non-current assets. So here's just a case study example to help you out. And number two, we have the asset test ratio. So what asset test ratio is that it's current asset minus inventories divided by current liabilities. So here is an example of the current, uh, sorry, the asset test ratio example. Then we have what can they tell us for the liquidity ratio. And just like the profitability ratio, one liquidity ratio is not very useful, but when the ratio is compared with others, then some effective analysis can be done. And here are some examples taken. And let's say in 2018, the current ratio is 1, and in 2017, the current ratio is 1.5. This means that the current ratio has fallen between 2017 and 2018, because it's like 2017 and 2018 is fallen to 1 from 1.5. And this could be because the business has bought and used many, uh, many more supplies, but not yet paid for them. 
and it, it could also be that because the business has used cash to pay for its fixed assets and the business has low liquidity and needs to increase its current assets or reduce current liabilities and let's say here we have um, 2018 the current ratio 1.75 and the asset test ratio 0.5 in 2018 and the current ratio is, is, is acceptable and much higher than the asset test ratio in 2018 as you can see and this means that the asset test ratio might be too low and the business might be at risk of not being able to pay its short-term debts from its liquid assets which are the cash and accounts receivable at the debtors the great difference between the two results is because there's a relatively high level of inventories then we have 5.5.4 why and how accounts are used and here's why and how accounts are used and the following groups of people have an interest in the public limited companies accounts and the ratios based on them number one we have the managers and they will use the accounts to help them keep control over the performance of each product or each division since they can see uh, you can see which products are profitably performing and which are not and number one this will allow them to take better decisions and number two the ratios can be compared with other firms in the industry or competitors and also with previous year to see how they're doing with the business themselves or with other businesses and obviously that the businesses will also try to improve their profitability and liquidity like liquidity positions each year then we have shareholders and since they are the owners of a limited company it is a legal requirement that they, they be presented with the financial accounts of the company from the income statements and the profitability ratios especially the uh, return on capital employed like, uh, equation assisting shareholders and potential investors can see whether they should invest in the business by buying shares a higher profitability the higher the chance of getting dividends and they will also compare the ratios with other companies with and with the previous year and take the most profitable decisions and the balance sheet will tell shareholders whether the business was worth more at the end of the year than the beginning of the year and the liquidity ratios will be used to, uh, like, to tell how risky it is to invest in the company and they won't want to invest in the business with serious liquidity problems then we have creditors and the balance sheet and the liquidity ratios will tell creditors or suppliers the cash position and the debt of the business and they will only be ready to supply if the business will if able to, is able to pay them and if, they are, if they have liquidity problems then they will supply the business as it is risky for them and for banks it's similar to like suppliers or creditors they will look at how risky it is to lend to the business and they will only lend to, pro like, to profitable and liquid firms then we have governments the government and tax officials will look at the profits of the company to fix a tax rate and to see if the business is profitable and liquid enough to continue operations and thus if the workers job is will be like protected then we have workers and trade unions and they will want to see if the business future is secure or not and if the business is continuously running a loss and is in risk of insolvency which is not being liquid or illiquid and it may shut down operations and workers will lose their jobs and other businesses the managers of competing companies may want to compare their performance to or may want to take over the business and want to see if the takeover will be beneficial and here's some limitations of using accounts and ratio analysis number one managers will have access to all accounts data but external users will only be able to use the published accounts which contain only the data required by law and the ratios are based on past accounting data and may not indicate how a business will perform in the future and accounting data over time will be affected by inflation or the rising prices and the comparisons between the years may be misleading and number four different companies may use slightly different accounting methods for example in valuing different that, that fixed assets and these different methods could lead to different ratios results therefore making comparisons difficult and here is a recap of all the ratio analysis equation that we have on top the profitability ratios like return of capital employed gross profit margin net profit margin
And in the bottom, we have the liquidity ratios or the equations like current ratio and asset test ratio. Then lastly, here's some definitions for 5.5 analysis of accounts. For number one, we have capital employed. And capital employed is shareholders' equity plus known current liabilities and it is a long-term and permanent capital invested into the business. Number two, liquidity is the ability of a business to pay back its short-term debt. And profitability is sorry, it is hypo. Profitability is the measurement of, of like the profit made relative to, to either the value of sales achieved or the capital invested into the business. And lastly, illiquid. Illiquid means that the assets are not easily convertible to cash. And that's it for this video for 5.5 of IGCSE Business Studies, where today we'll look into the analysis of accounts. And in our next video, we'll move on to section 6 because this is the last lesson for section 5. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful and helpful. And if you did, please give me a like and subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And also comment if you have any questions or constructive criticisms. And also check out my Instagram in the description for more daily content. And that's it for this video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, Stay safe and happy learning.